This phone number works. It's a little Easter egg, Stranger Things Easter egg. No way, I'm calling yeah. it. Hi, you have reached the residence of Marie Bauman. Mom, if this is you, please hang up and call me between the hours of 5 and 6 p.m. as previously discussed. Now, if this is anyone but my mother or Joyce, well, <laughs> you think you're real clever getting my number, don't you? You're not clever. You're not special. You are simply one of the many, many nimwits to call here, and the closest you will ever get to me is this pre-recorded message. So, at the beep, do me a favor. Hang up and never call here again. <laughs> What's up, guys? Another episode of Heart to Heart. We're here with the man, Dr. Romanelli, and Stefan, of course, slash Darren, slash Dr. X, slash a million things. But yeah, we're, we're in a really cool space right now at the Netflix HQ that these guys have been spending a lot of time in. And yeah, wanted to just start by talking about what the space is and kind of like how it all came to be and all that jazz. We are at the Netflix headquarters in Hollywood and my agency was brought on about six months ago to help develop an artist in residence slash maker studio. And the philosophy of the agency since its infancy was a safe environment for artists to exchange ideas. So um, I've been lucky to be behind the agency now for a little over 20 years, but this is the first time we've had a satellite studio slash extension that's been incubating over the last six months. Hell yeah, you're quite a person that combines a lot of worlds. Like where where did your creative life start? It's a little complicated, so I'll do my best to keep it somewhat focused. But I started my brand around 2000, 99, 2000. Um, and I just graduated from University of Oregon, where I went to college Sick. in Eugene, the home of Nike. And um, I remember distinctly having a vision of wanting to reconstruct or recycle an old Nike jacket. And uh, Dapper Dan, I had seen some incredible pieces Dapper Dan had made in magazines. Um, and I kind of wanted to create like a sports version uh, in my own language that could be something I could rock so I could stand out and have something that was one of a kind because I always loved the idea of having something before everyone else in the school had it. So originally, Dr. Romanelli, my initials DR, um, came from this idea that I was a doctor of cloth and I was taking these older ghosts of a story at the bottom of a pile because I would love to go thrifting or find vintage and then take that vintage and bring it back to life in a more contemporary way. And as I started rebuilding these garments and finding these amazing teams to help me bring these vintage pieces back to life, I kind of perfected the narrative by traveling to Japan really seeing how the stores came to life in Tokyo and how fashion designers were more revered in Japan. I was selling my jackets at Maxfield and a store called Beams yeah, from Japan. Beams. They bought the Nike jackets in the early 2000s and I did a lot of business with them. And then I met a store called Loveless and one of the guys that did Loveless opened a store at the Louis Vuitton flagship in Omotosando. There was an upstore membership only boutique called Celux, C-E-L-U-X and I participated in that store for a couple of years. Oh, yeah. But that was elevated fashion in a whole other light. I had never seen fashion curated um, on that level and that got me thinking about storytelling in a whole other capacity. This is before smartphones, so I had to go to the Japanese bookstores to buy the magazines or wait for the magazines to come out. And I was lucky enough during that run I had in the early 2000s, I met Sarah from the store Colette and Colette bought a bunch of my Nike jackets as well, and that's how I met Kanye. He bought one of my Nike jackets. It was still super DIY at that time, and I remember when I was in the thick of it, I would take this kind of vintage Polaroid camera that I had, and I would shoot pictures of the vintage, and that was the hang tag. So, so I would cool. hang the piece of the vintage off of the reconstructed jacket so the consumer could see what the jacket was made from. So it had the before and after in this instant gratification where you could see everything in one breath. And it's been this constant dialogue in my life, upcycling and um, reworking um, vintage. I just can't get enough of it. How did you guys meet each other? I met Steph over Instagram. I think I shot you a DM. Yeah. Because I love the work. 
and I said, let's get together where are you based? You said LA. I think you came by the office first? Yeah, we had our office meeting. I was doing some custom uh, t-shirts and you liked the shirt, so you're like, bring the shirts by, like, let's talk. Um, so yeah, that was yeah. kind of the beginning. Yeah, and I remember when you came by um, the old office space, you brought some books. Yeah. And I started flipping through the books and you were doodling on the pages and I remember I asked you if, if it was okay if we left some of the books behind. And I always loved the idea of seeding certain objects in the office to let them incubate and organically, you know, position themselves in this creative space. And you were so dedicated to coming by and switching out the books that um, I couldn't help but get lost in the work. And I remember I bought a bunch of ripped pages from an old comic book where you where you brought the characters to life and we framed those and then we started I started getting some paintings and after a year or so the work was omnipresent in the office and our relationship sort of organically developed and we became friends and that friendship kind of led us to you being the first artist in residence here at H at HQ yeah yeah it's cool that you that you were drawn to the books cuz everyone I've shown the books like likes them a lot but they don't always know like what to do with them, and you were you were down to like let's see let's like put them in the office and like have people you know look through them as they are meant to be. The textile stuff for me because I've always been a big believer in upcycling and customizing apparel. Um, the embroidery work and the customization was really great, so I think that plus the books yeah. plus the paintings kind of established our dialogue. Yeah, for sure. I was curating in the older space for me and my clients. This time we're bringing to life the same style strategy and thinking for, for Netflix. So the opportunity was interesting. I've been a fan of the brand since it was DVDs arriving at my house to some of my favorite shows. So it made a lot of sense because it felt like an organic connection. And Stranger Things was our first project. And yeah. I instantly thought about Steph because a lot of the books he left behind at the old agency were like older school books of like 80s graphics. Yeah. And it just felt interesting. I remembered some of the visuals that he was bringing to life in the book. So I presented the idea to him to create a limited edition collection inspired by his show, inspired by his relationship with the show. And uh, you know, the last few months have been wild from the paintings, the drawings, the customized gear. Um, it's just been really easy to work on and visually stunning, you know? These are the first two, these are the first two pieces. I started these right after the solo show at OTI, and I kind of took loosely based references of the 80s, and some have Stranger Things references, some are a little looser. The alphabet is like the Stranger Things sign when the, they're talking to Will on the upside down, but yeah, these are the first two pieces, looser, looser references of the 80s. Talk to me a little bit about your relationship with books. Like, how does it, how does it, are they all around your studio? Have you always collected books? When I was a kid, we did family art night. My mom showed us this technique. She was like, okay, you take these old books and you know, gesso in them and like draw in them and repurpose them. When I first moved to LA, I was making art with David LaChapelle. I was like drawing all the time, hanging around him. I remembered making those books when I was a kid and I was like, I should do that again, re-rock that idea. So that's when I started doing the books as an adult. But yeah, I mean, I just am like obsessed with old photos, like 80s, 50s, 60s, like 70s. I got a bunch of these 80s books in eBay and then I found this one at this bookstore. Something about the quality and just like looking back in time. The artist sketchbook is a lot of times the best work, you know? It's like the most intimate space. So it was those two pieces and then this was the next piece I started working on when I first got into the space and I was doing some like direct 80s iconography like the gremlins Sick. but then like I remember I had this phone when I was a kid my parents had this phone and it's in this book so I like right there and then in Stranger Things like the phone is a big part of it because Will's like trying to call his mom with the phone I would come up with another idea like oh this is another subject I can touch on from the show or the 80s so like let's explore that and each piece is like a proof of concept you know what I'm saying like that piece with the spray painted orbs is completely different than everything else but that's what my work is I think is like always trying something new and like 
you know, experimenting. This one has some of the characters from Stranger Things that I pulled from a, one of these comics that Netflix provided. And then this is like the kid's bike uh, and um, the lab. Like the bad guys in the show like disguise their vans as the US Department of Energy. This is um, Mike's house in the show. So yeah, pretty much every single piece ha do you think has a tie-in. Like the ones that have writing and characters, do you normally start with one or the other? The, it usually the starts with like the image first and then the text follows, you know? What's this piece? So that's Will's brain. They like scanned Will's brain, so they had that image. So that's like actually the character's like brain scans. Is yeah, this so airbrushed? Th that's airbrushed, and then I painted black acrylic over it. What was the coolest part for you, just in terms of like the the entire process? It was very appealing to me because I grew up. I was born in '92, and my brother was born in the '80s. So I grew up with like the a lot of '80s iconography and just that like. Those images, those logos, those toys, like in my brain, and like the, even the movies, like action, 80s action movies are my favorite movies, you know? Like, I love that idea of like these, like, just like superheroes. Um, so that made it, it made a lot of sense to me to come into this project because I love the 80s and I love Stranger Things and I've watched Stranger Things all the seasons. And it's interesting because Stranger Things is a show about the 80s in modern, I mean, we watch it in 2022. So then there's this thing of like, well, my, my practice already involves like my contemporary ideas brought in to like combined with past images from the past. Do you think it's like easier to make a collection in a way where it's like you have this kind of like stream of inspiration because it's like, okay, watch the show and gather things from there. Yeah, definitely. The assignment is always helpful for me. I love yeah. having like a direction. Vans is working closely with Netflix right now. Right. Same with Champion on this Hawkins inspired collection. Right. There's also these amazing vintage Carhartts that our friend Sean Witherspoon sourced. So these vintage Carhartts are primarily from the 80s. Yeah, I love how you brought them to life. Oh, there you go. Yeah, There's the tiger. The I love inside, this yeah. piece. This piece and these Carhartts with the lights, I thought were worth Oh yeah. So. Yeah, so this is also hand embroidered. I mean, I love the hand embroidery feel and like look, you know. Netflix is partnered with Vans and they provided all these, I don't remember how many pairs, but they provided a bunch of Vans shoes for me to customize. So borrowing from the books, borrowing from the show, borrowing from these like 80s memorabilia cards. I wanted to do some that were like involving the icons, like the pizza and the rat are f kind of hinting towards the next season coming up. And then there's the dice for Dungeons and Dragons. Then there's some like these that are just my like reinterpretation of an 80s textile. Where yeah. are they available? The Vans shoes are going to be available on Netflix shop. Dot com. There you I have think, it. Is that no, right? I think it's just Netflix.shop. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where are they going to be available? Netflix.shop. There we go. Something I was trying to figure out how we talk about is just like how to kind of take just like making cool shit to turning that into like making a living. And also just like partnering with brands and having people like validate you. You know, starting from like Stefan who drew in his notebooks to being at Netflix. What is that process like in terms of like the connective tissue, getting them to trust it? and them to believe in it and kind of like yeah. all that, you know? I mean, I moved out to LA without any like plan or anything. I just had some money I saved up and was like, I'm gonna be an artist. Like spent, literally brought a sketchbook everywhere with me, like nonstop drawing. I would draw in the club, I'd draw in, you know, at dinner with people, whatever I was doing, I was drawing. So like from that to now coming to this was like, you know, this is what I moved to LA for and like, it feels like, you know, the natural thing. I was making art in a very like reclusive zone by myself and was like, didn't really have a place that I was like expressing it besides Instagram. Um, and I was realizing like, I need to f figure out how to like elevate this besides just making art by myself. So I hit up uh, Bernard Wilhelm, the fashion designer and like cold called him and no way yeah I just cold called their studio and was like hey I like need a job or I'll do I'll intern for you I'll do anything they're like okay like come in for an interview so I came in and they're like yeah we need people to sew and I really didn't know how to sew like they do crazy garment construction like because he studied under 
um, Alexander McQueen, and like, yeah, he's just a freaking crazy guy. So they were doing crazy stuff. I couldn't sew like that. I was like, I, I don't know how to sew, but I can draw, like, show him these drawings. So she showed him these drawings, and he liked the drawings, and then I sent him some more, and he emailed me like, I don't really like these. I don't know if this is gonna work out. And I was like, I emailed him back, like, just let me come in to meet you, because I hadn't met him yet, and I'll, like, convince you I can do this. So, like, <laughs> I, I made all the drawings you bought with the comic heads and those. I made those the night before I met with him, and no I way. showed him all those, and he liked those. And then he hired me to do a collection with him. Um, so that was like my first person. That's how I discovered the work, I think. Through Bernard? Yeah, I saw, he posted some stuff, and then I saw, yeah. I feel like I had a lot of similar feelings when I was just like growing up, and I was like, what, how do you make the next step of like people caring? Yeah, <laughs> like, for sure. Just going from like taking photos to then like turning it into a job. And yeah, honestly, like the best things for me, and honestly, like why we wanted to start Hearts and like a lot of conversations we had, it was like so many things that like were very informative to my like creative life came from just like going to events and just being around people and kind of just like like-minded individuals and just like very cool experiences going to parties, being that kid that was like, yo, I take photos and you need to know. And it's, it's in your brain, wherever it goes next, we'll see. Um, but I think like something you do a lot is just like creating that safe space and creating that place where it's just like a lot of people who you never know who they know. It's it's just like they're they're passionate and they're excited and then that could lead to like, I don't know, the most life-changing thing ever. There's so many people that are always like, dude, how do we like make it in the scene or like break in if we're not from LA or whatever. And I think a lot of it is just like, I don't know. One person leads to the next, and just being like, like, like you said, genuine friends that are excited and passionate about just making shit. Stefan's done such a great job bridging the physical and the digital. His craft is like undeniably beautifully executed, and I think you've done a great job bringing that energy into the digital space. And I think the bridge between the two spaces within your language is what makes your craft so appealing to me and why it made a lot of sense for Stranger Things because it's this idea of playing in like different realms. And I think being able to create that safe space in between those two spheres is what it's all about, you know? Yeah, it's there's so many ways to make art and like so many platforms now that I wanna like be involved in all of them, you know? Like it's cool to be able to you know, walk in in between two zones and be able to like put your hands in different scenarios. And I appreciate, you know, like I love cave paintings, like ancient art and like folk art, you know, and we live in this time period with phones all the time. So it's like, you know, how do those two things meet and how can one lend itself to the other? So that's, this has been, fun to like experiment with those ideas and then the 80s like technology in the 80s was like this funny thing of like lasers and like you know the future i don't know i'm i'm, I'm kind of like it was like very over the top infomercially like what's the future gonna look like exactly <laughs> and now we're in it but we're also shaping it and like the heart project is kind of you know is a part of that and i think so many artists these days too are just like there's a lot of people that are starting to blow up and they're like, they're good at everything. This whole world is like, the multi-hyphenate is now like becoming the regular, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which sure. is crazy. And I'm excited to like, I don't know, from from Hearts even, like yesterday I was talking to some holders on the phone because they like submitted some project ideas and we we're just talking through it and like just learning th about like all these very crazy like technological apps they're getting into that like make it way easier to animate or make it like all these things that I'm like, it's just really cool to have this space where it's like learning from each other. All right, so we're talking about the recipe. We need to hear Darren's <laughs> recipe of, of my recipe. How to how to be the friendship a human. economy, the, ki <laughs> the kindness economy. I've always kind of looked at this recipe for success in terms of space. I always say like the moment of impact. You have five seconds, even less now, to grab somebody's attention, especially with like how quick you scroll, right? So I feel like. We touched on this earlier, but if you can connect with the consumer senses, you have a chance to develop a brand loyalist or a fan for life. 
right? So I'm always thinking a lot about what does something look like? What does something sound like? What does something smell like? What does it taste like? And if you can really hone in and deliver um, a believable environment, anything's possible. So my space, my agency, this space that we're sitting in, a lot of attention has gone into all those senses. And that's what I think has been my recipe for incubation or market strategy over the years. So Stefan, <laughs> what do you want life to look like for artists in the future? I've said this before on Twitter spaces, but like I did this, I had this idea, I had two ideas ever in my entire life. No, I had two ideas. One was this idea of a cup. It's a cup idea where everyone, you get a cup when you're born and then you pass this cup down to the, your descendants and every, you just use one cup throughout your entire life. You use it for every drink, every whatever, Gross. you know what I mean? And then the other idea, so there's just one cup. It's, a, it's ecologically friendly, and it's, it's a tradition. It's, you know. And then the other idea was an inside-out shoe. So I cut a shoe up and t flipped it inside out and reconstructed it. So I want to help people like pursue those ideas and feel like they can try those kinds of things out, like teach people how to experiment and feel confident about their experiments, you know? Nice, dude. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of it also, you know, is this idea of like manifesting your destiny, really believing in what's possible. And I think the more you think about something, you bring it into existence. Yeah. So I really do think that's a powerful tool. And you just have to believe and visualize yourself in whatever you think is possible and then see it until it becomes reality. One thing I, I admire about you is the confidence in how you speak about things. And you're like, we're going to get this done. And I think like what I've been learning a lot from a lot of people around me is when you're just like so in it and you're believing it, everyone hops on the train. Yeah, I love it. It's a lot easier for everyone to just be like, yep, yeah. like that's it. Yeah. Regardless if there's any product or finished thing, it's just like, yeah. this guy's gonna fucking make it happen. Yeah. Confidence is key. Confidence and ultimate. consistency. Last question, favorite 80s movie? Fast Times at Richmond High, hands down. One of the best all time classic films. Banger. Uh, still love it till today. You? The Goonies. Great one. Love the Goonies. I honestly, there's so many. Terminator Cliffhanger is a really one, good one. Yeah. That's a hilarious movie. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And Over the Top. Ah, oh, wow. Stallone? That's, yeah. Wow, amazing. <laughs> Any Sylvester Stallone yeah. movie is amazing. Great. great yeah. Great choices. Peter. Well, dude, good to sesh, you guys. Thanks Thank for you. the time. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you for heart coming. to heart, baby. Heart to heart. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about these shoes, Steph. You want me to tell you about these? <laughs> <laughs>